It's a man-hating movement. It's not about supporting women. It's about attacking and hating men. And then what about pornography? Pornography is a neurotoxin. Who's pushing the pornography down your throat? Who created the pornography revolution in America? Is it liberation to have pornography available in every home, on every computer, on every iPhone? Or is it a form of imprisonment? And what does your government have to do with the pornographing of America? Where it's everywhere. This filth is in everyone's home. Children have pornography on their iPhones. Who is letting this happen? Who is behind this dark secret? Who is behind this hidden side of pornography? Who is doing this? So is it internet pornography? Is it about the lawyers who have let, let women come up with fake complaints? What is it about? Why is the white male the one with the least number of replacement children of all races? Why? What's going on? How is it happening? There are races that have no problem with getting married and having many children. Obama's bringing them as fast as he can. That's just a fact. And the greatest defense of truth, by the way, the greatest, greatest defense against uh, any kind of slander against me is the truth. If what I've said is not true, I wouldn't say it. And by the way, so why are you not getting married? What's the matter with you guys? What's the matter with you guys? What are you afraid of? Young men, why are you afraid to get married? Why are you afraid to have children? Now, I got to tell you something. Everyone knows this. Raising a child is perhaps the hardest job you could ever do. Everyone knows that. Anyone could have a child. There was a poet in North Beach, San Francisco years ago who once, uh, we got into a screaming fight in a bar and he said, I have a child. I said, you raised a child like a dog. All you did was fornicate and run away from the wife. You don't have a child. You're nothing more than a mutt in the street. Well, it led to an altercation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7287. Savage. If all the songs were romantic, and idealized romance at that, where the woman was something different than a man, not just physically, but a special being, sort of the angel, earth angel. Woman was put up on a pedestal. Men revered women. Men were taught to revere and respect women. And then all of a sudden along came Allen Ginsberg, Timothy Leary, and the feminist movement, and all of that changed. And in the 60s, the so-called Cultural Revolution uh, turned women into a sex object, simply to be used and abused. And then it reversed itself, and the lawyers made the man somebody to be used and abused. Now, if you look at the commercials that you've seen in your lifetime, can anyone listening to this show tell me that the mentally ill idiots who run the advertising industry do not debase white males in particular in every commercial that you see? Every commercial is an idiot white male who blew up the toaster or set the house on fire or ran a lawnmower into a garage or ran his own foot over. Now, why would the psychopaths on Madison Avenue and the other denizens of insanity do this to a particular race? The answer is they're cowards, and they can't do it to any other race. They can't show black males in that light. They can't show Hispanic males in that light. They can't show the idiocy of throwbacks being brought into the country who want to put women in chains. No, so they pick on the white males because the white male is the most tolerant, decent male on the planet. And you ask yourself, how is it? How is it that the nation called America was the most productive nation on earth, the most tolerant nation on earth until very recently. And ask yourself what this nation will be like in 10 or 20 years with the influx of third worlders who do not share these values, especially these values of tolerance towards women. Ask yourself what this country will be like. The answer is it won't be like. It'll be nothing. It will look like Iraq. That's what it'll look like, or maybe worse. And so I'm not saying that you can do anything about it. All I'm going to say is you can do about it in your, you can do something about it in your own life. This is not a call to revolution. I'm not asking you to march on Washington with a pitchfork in your hand. That's not going to change a darn thing. The only thing you can change is your own life. That's all I'm saying to you. There's another thing you have to know about all of this. Many, many years ago, when I consulted with religious people, uh, I asked them how their arranged marriages work out. I asked them many times, how could you marry someone that you don't even love? And wise, older men said, 
Well, you learn to live the person. You learn you learn to love the person you're living with. See, it's the reversal of the United States of America. Guys want to walk into a bar and meet someone they think is meant for them for life. Well, how does that normally work out? So you can do it the other way, which is have someone picked for you in an arranged marriage, for example, if you're in a very religious community, and you learn to love each other by living with each other, by learning to respect each other. That's what he said to me. But I want to get back to talk radio because this is just talk radio. We have no power, no influence. Uh, in the middle of the night last night at 3 in the morning, that sour, horrible-looking man with a gullet hanging down from his neck, the number one leading Democrat in Congress, Mitch McConnell, stabbed America in the back and ran a budget deal by everyone at 3 o'clock in the morning. This is something that is done in, used to be done in banana republics. They wouldn't even try it in Ecuador today. What's going on in the United States under this most corrupt president in American history, he has so corrupted everybody that even the Republican Party has become more corrupted than it already was. He has done something to this country that you can't even touch. The man is a living virus. Four o'clock in the morning, they pass a budget. And they give this shyster an $80 billion budget so he can spend it around on illegal voters, pay off fakers in San Francisco with fake solar plants in the middle of the Nevada desert. Look into those grants and contracts. See who got billions of dollars in money from your pocket. And see who's connected to senators and congressmen with fake solar plants. But that's a little side note. We can't change the corruption. It's so endemic right now that it's hard to know how to stop it short of a pure revolution, which is something I am not calling for. We've tried the ballot box. Did it work? Did the ballot box work when we voted? No, it got worse. Because we had John Boehner, the crybaby, and Mitch McConnell, the corrupt. So what's next? Tell me what's next. Well, we have one election left. I'm just launching into a political diatribe right now. And you know what I think. Unless we have a nationalist candidate, we're finished as a nation. The nation will disappear in your lifetime. Unless we have a candidate who espouses our borders, putting a wall on the border, reasserts English as the official language of the nation, that's the glue that holds a nation together, it's language. Can you imagine a French a politician saying that they should have ballots in ten languages to, to, permit people, to permit people who don't even speak French to vote in their elections? They would be hung. San Francisco has had elections in many languages for many years. That's how you have the vermin that run this city. That's how you have the corrupt vermin in power. Who do you think elected them? You think it's the taxpayers? So what I'm saying to you is borders, language, culture, it applies to every country on the earth. But I want to stick to the issue of demographics, demographics, demographics. The white man is being bred out of existence, primarily because he won't get married, primarily because he f he's afraid of women, primarily because he's been infantilized and he's terrified to be a father. And so if you want to comment on any of this, go ahead. Make my day. Let's take some callers. WABC Rose. Why won't men get married? Why won't men get married? The tradition of marriage has already been broken down thanks to this administration. Who would well, want... Hold it. Let, let's, let's not be silly. Obama didn't, didn't start the ball rolling. I mean, let's be clear. Before him, granted, it came before him. He's in there to fulfill whatever has not already been done. But why don't men get married? That's the, let's forget Obama for a minute. The all-powerful Obama. Forget him for two seconds. Forget him for two seconds. Why won't men get a woman and get married today? Okay. What about pornography? You mentioned that. Why would they want to get married when they can already have what they feel is necessary to fulfill their own... Um, <laughs> You know, their, their own, it, it's pornography. Pornography. They can look at the phone and already get it. So let me ask you something. Should pornography be banned? Absolutely. Now, that's an interesting question. How many people would vote for the outright absolute illegality of pornography as it was in my generation? Raise your hands if you think pornography, as much as you may enjoy it, and many of you do, because I, I read the data. Would you vote to eliminate this filth from our uh, blogosphere, get rid of it? Would you vote to get rid of it? Yes or no? Of course you would. 
Of course you would. Most sane societies don't permit pornography. But what's the real reason men don't get married? I don't think it's pornography. I think that's one of the releases that men use. I don't think it's the reason they don't find the woman. There's a lot more to getting married than just having a sexual release, isn't there? I mean, a man says, okay, that's the reason to get married? That, that's not the only reason a man gets married, or is it? I don't know. What do you think? Mark, are you there? Line seven? Gone with the wind. Line eight, WMAL in Washington, where the show is king. Damien, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hey, doctor. Um, well, number one, I definitely don't think that pornography is the reason. I agree with you there. It may attribute to it, but that is not the reason. Um, right. For me personally, as a 26-year-old male, um, I just think the economy is really bad, and I have a lot of friends, too, who would love to settle down with a girl and get married and think about having kids and stuff, but... As far as me and my friends go, we want to internalize a lot of the costs of raising kids. I want to send my kid, for instance, to a private school. I don't want to deal with the crap that kids are learning now in public schools. You know, I want to have more control and internalize all those costs. I think if the economy... That's a real, that's a real factor, which is the, uh, the affordability factor. But if you let that be the... If you if you let the affordability issue become the primary issue, you'll never get married. It was always expensive to have children, Damien. It's always been costly and very expensive. Uh, when I was young, we had no paid child care. We had no private schools to send our children to. And you have to, you have to understand that that's the price you're going to pay. That's called living. It's life 101. And there's another thing. Look, men are afraid of divorce. They marry someone they meet somewhere, and two years later she has a child, and then she gets a shyster lawyer from NYU, and he loses half of everything he owns if he doesn't wind up in jail, and he's paying it off for the next 20 years. That could be one of the reasons men don't get married, is because of the lawyers. Don't you think that's a reason, Damien? I do think so, and I'll tell you also, Michael, my grandfather, God bless his heart, he was in World War II, he was an underwater demolition team man, and I once heard, it may have been from you actually, that we had an entire generation of men that were literally just thrust into manhood. You know, you didn't have a choice about, oh, I think I'm going to go study liberal arts and, you know, do this and that for a while. You know, you kind of just were forced to grow up and be a man, and I think as a result, that generation, having been so hard and tough, took it a little... Well, I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about that. A lot of the men were very soft before they went into war, if you want to go back to World War II. They weren't all gung-ho soldiers. Most guys didn't want to fight. They, it, they wanted nothing to do with war. But as Patton said, don't be afraid. When you see your friend's guts hanging out, you'll know what to do. People learn to fight when they have to fight. Not everyone wants to go there and have their head blown off or kill someone or, or knife someone's guts out. So I, I wouldn't glorify the generation and say they were all such tough guys. What I'm trying to say is, is something a little different. The more rays of the time were different. Women were put on a pedestal. Women were held up as something different and beautiful. Don't you remember there was, there was a phrase, your better side, your softer side? Let's talk about that, the hardening of women. Let's go into an area that most people are afraid to tread upon which is the issue of what has happened to women where they become as hard, if not harder, than men, and men are afraid to be around them. Is that not an issue as well? Absolutely. That's absolutely an issue. The, the way that women have changed, absolutely, that's a big issue. And I think that's why it's... So oh, you take a look at the average gym, the women look like ninja warriors. Our men are afraid of them. Okay, so I'm going to send you government zero. i got another caller waiting on the line i got to get to. We'll do this topic for a little bit more, then we'll do all the news of the day. Maybe you're bored of it. I'm not. I think it's good. Line number 10. Ryan, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. What's your point? Dr. Savage, I agree with everything you've said so far. I mean, especially the fact with that last caller that women have definitely changed and gotten, you know, it's like they're empowered and feel that, you know, just because that they, you know, have some sort of control physically, you know, when men try to make the initiative or move towards them, they, you know, feel like they have to, I don't know the exact words for it, but they just have to be empowered over men in most situations. And, you know, when it comes down to... Wait, wait, let, let me take each statement as you said, said so you say women have been taught that they should be in control of men even in a dating situation they have to call the shots but hasn't that always been the case 
Ryan, where women always determine whether or not there would be, for example, any any lovemaking. It's always been up to the woman. And 